I know we all remember when Charizard defeated Articuno, and of course when Sceptile one-shot Darkrai, or even when Pikachu defeated Tapu Koko. But, um, what was Torkoal's best win? Or what about Hawlucha's best battle? You probably don't remember, and that's okay. That's what I'm here for. Because today, I'm gonna be breaking down the best feat of every single Ash Ketchum Pokemon. But before I begin, let me just say this. This list is pretty subjective, but I will of course try my best to power scale. And also, this will not strictly be filled with each Pokemon's best win, but feats as a whole. You'll see what I mean throughout the video. And finally, to add a fun twist, I'll go region by region, but we'll progress within each region by the level of difficulty of each feat. So what I mean is Ash's Sceptile defeating Darkrai will come after Ash's Glalie beating some random Pokemon. Got it? All right, let's begin. So first off, we've got Ash's Butterfree. And obviously, Ash didn't have this Pokemon for too long, so its list of achievements isn't all that great. But its best feat came as a Metapod when it destroyed a Pinsir's Pinsir. Wow, that's actually insane. Now Pidgeot's best feat came when it was a Pidgeotto, evolved, and helped beat the powerful Wild Fero after the Kanto League. Next is Ash's Muck, who actually only did one impressive thing ever, but it was at least pretty cool and actually pretty iconic too. It came in the fourth round of the Kanto League when it defeated Jeanette's OP Bellsprout, when it quite literally bodied the little sprout to help Ash move on to the fifth round. Now it's time for Ash's most forgotten Pokemon, Primate. Its best feat was when it defeated the Team Rocket stolen Hitmonlee and ultimately won the P1 Grand Prix Tournament. And then Ash immediately left it behind. And now we've got our first starter of the video with Ash's Squirtle. Unfortunately, Squirtle is the least impressive of Ash's Kanto starters. And its best feat came in the Battle Frontier arc when it was able to defeat Brandon's speedy Ninjask. And now we've got another forgotten Ash Ketchum Pokemon, Lapras. While Lapras was pretty much just a means to get around the Orange Islands, it was actually able to tie Orange League champion Drake's Gengar, which was likely the second strongest Pokemon on his team. So naturally, this is Lapras's most impressive moment ever. Next up, we've got Kingler, and I think we all remember its best feat, which of course was when as a Krabby, it defeated Mandy's Executor, evolved, then swept through Mandy's Seedra and Golbat to help Ash win the second round of the Kanto League. Now we've got Ash's Tauros, and yeah, he's got 30 of them, but I do believe he only uses one of them for battles. And that Tauros' best feat was when it tied Annabelle's Metagross in the Battle Frontier. This is actually super impressive, seeing how Tauros never really received a ton of training or battling experience. Next up is Bulbasaur, who is definitely one of Ash's most reliable Pokemon ever. And Bulbasaur's most impressive moment came in the Battle Frontier Saga, and it's when Bulbasaur defeated Brandon's Dusclops, then tied his Soul Rock, which ultimately played a huge hand in Ash defeating Brandon and conquering the Battle Frontier. Next is Snorlax, whose best feat is actually kind of tough to pin down. It's worth noting that every time Snorlax is battled, he's taken down at least one opponent Pokemon, which is pretty impressive on its own. But I do think Snorlax's best feat also came in the Battle Frontier, when it defeated Frontier Brain Greta's Hariyama and Metacham. And yes, this of course is the battle where Snorlax used six different moves, which again is an amazing feat on its own. As for Charizard, it's another Pokemon with loads of awesome moments and feats. An honorable mention has to go to when it defeated three of Gary's Mons in the Johto League, which of course included his Blastoise. But I think we can all agree that Charizard's best feat is when it defeated Articuno in the Battle Frontier. This was actually the first time in the series when a normal Pokemon had beaten a Legendary. And finally from Kanto, we've got Pikachu. And seeing as it is the face of the franchise and how he's been in over 1,000 episodes, this was tough to pick, so I've kind of got a three-way tie here. First is when Pikachu defeated Brandon's Regiice in the Battle Frontier. But just as impressive is when Pikachu's Z-Move overpowered Tapu Koko's Z-Move and ultimately defeated the Island Deity. But arguably Pikachu's best feat came in the Masters 8 tournament. While its entire tournament performance was amazing, I gotta highlight how well Pikachu did in the final battle with Leon. Pikachu defeated Gigantamax Cinderace and Leon's Charizard, who might have just been the strongest Pokemon the anime had ever seen, which of course ultimately earned Ash the title of World Monarch and Strongest Trainer in the World. 
To recap, by ranking these Pokemon's feats in ascending order, it goes Butterfree, Pidgeot, Muck, Primeape, Squirtle, Lapras, Kingler, Tauros, Bulbasaur, Snorlax, Charizard, and then finally, Pikachu. Awesome, let's move on. Now we begin Johto starting with Totodile. Totodile was actually very unimpressive, but I guess Totodile's best moment was when it defeated Harrison Sneasel in the Johto League. From one starter to the next, now we've got Quillava. And Quillava's best feat came when it was still just a Cyndaquil, when it took down Jasmine's powerful Steelix, earning Ash the Mineral Badge. Now for Ash's Noctowl. Noctowl was actually pretty underused by Ash, especially when compared to his other regional birds. But Noctowl's best feat was when he defeated Morty's Haunter and Gengar. And mind you, Noctowl also squared off with Ghastly earlier in this match, so he pretty much took down an entire family tree to earn Ash the Fog Badge. And we can round out the Johto starter's feats finally here with Bayleaf. Bayleaf was certainly Ash's strongest Johto starter, and I'd say she accomplished two equally impressive feats. Her first came in the Cyanwood Gym. After Pikachu lost, Ash found himself down 2-1, to one, but Bayleaf was able to take down both Chuck's Poliwrath as well as his Machoke to earn Ash the Storm Badge. But just as impressive a feat came in the Johto League in Ash's battle against Harrison. And during this battle, Bayleaf took down Harrison's Houndoom, and this Houndoom was definitely no slouch either. Beyond just having a major typing advantage, this Houndoom also was able to take down Ash's Snorlax earlier in the same match. Now it's time for Ash's Heracross. Heracross had some great moments over the years, like when it overcame Dark Void and landed a powerful Mega Horn on Tobias's Darkrai. But of course, Heracross's best moment came in Ash's battle against Gary in the Johto League. It faced a major disadvantage going up against Gary's Magmar. But Heracross tanked a point-blank fire blast, then overpowered a follow-up flamethrower, and ultimately took down Magmar with Megahorn. However, taking the crown for the most impressive feat of any of Ash's Johto Pokemon is surprisingly Donphan. It was Ash's final Johto Pokemon, and Ash didn't really use it in battle that much. But Donphan's most amazing feat came during the Battle Frontier arc when it defeated Pike Queen Lucy's Surviper, and it did this using an awesome flaming rollout attack. So to recap Ash's Johto team, it goes from Totodile, to Quillava, to Noctowl, to Bayleaf, to Heracross, then finally Donphan, who has the most impressive feat of them all. Alright, now it's time for Hoenn. Ash's Hoenn team was actually very tough to scale, but unsurprisingly, the least impressive is Torkoal. Torkoal didn't really have a ton of great moments, but his best feat came during the Battle Frontier arc in Ash's first rematch battle with Brandon. Here, Torkoal squared off with a Registeel, and while he didn't actually win the battle, he definitely pushed the Legendary to his limit. And overall, Torkoal had an awesome performance here. Next up is Glalie. Seeing how it was a late addition to Ash's Hoenn team, it actually wasn't a part of that many battles. However, its most impressive feat is when it teamed up with Grovile to take down Clark's Quillava and Charizard in the Hoenn League. And I scale this slightly higher than Torkoal's feat because Glalie actually took down the opponent Pokemon. And also Glalie had a major type disadvantage here, whereas Torkoal actually had the typing advantage. Now, as for Ash's Corphish, he has two equally impressive feats. The first is when he teamed up with Swellow to take down Battle Dome Brain Tuckers, Arcanine, and Swampert. But a few episodes later, Corphish also took down Battle Tower Annabelle's Alakazam in a traditional one-on-one -on -one battle. Now we've got Swellow, and during the AG series, Swellow did some incredible things. And honestly, I think they are all very impressive, so I've decided to just list them off here. Swellow's best feats include stopping a Donphan's rollout attack, teaming up with Corphish to take down Tucker's Arcanine and Swampert, Thunder Armor, and finally, Swellow took down Spencer's Venusaur. Yeah, I can confidently say Swellow is Ash's best ever bird. And now for Sceptile, who is undoubtedly Ash's best Hoenn Mon, and it's probably one of his top six Pokemon ever. Sceptile's best feat is pretty obvious. It came in the Sinnoh League when it took down Tobias's undefeated Darkrai, and mind you, this Darkrai was likely at full health thanks to using Dream Eater on Ash's previous Pokemon. So that means Sceptile essentially one-shot this Darkrai. 
But just as impressive is when Sceptile was able to catch a speed form Deoxys from behind. Sceptile literally caught the statistically fastest Pokemon ever. That is insane. So for the Hoenn recap, it goes Torkoal, to Glalie, to Corphish, to Swellow, to Sceptile. Now on to Sinnoh. We'll start the Sinnoh section with Ash's main jobber, Torterra. Torterra's best ever feat came when it was still just a grottle, and it was able to put up a pretty good fight against Frontier Brain Palmer's Rhyperior. Next up is Star Raptor. Star Raptor's best feat came during Ash and Paul's battle at Lake Acuity. It's there that Star Raptor took down Paul's Weavile and earned Ash one of his only wins of that battle. Now we'll move on to Gibble, and Gibble's best moment came in Ash's matchup with Conway in the third round of the Sinnoh League. During the battle, Gibble was able to defeat a tricky Shuckle, and then, after a rest, he came back out to defeat Conway's Dusk Noir and win Ash the battle. Buizel is next. And early on in Sinnoh, Buizel had some amazing battles. But I think its best feat came in Ash's gym battle with Crasher Wake. In that battle, Buizel defeated both Wake's Quagsire as well as his Floatzel and earned Ash the Fen Badge. Next up is a surprising one with Gliscor. He was actually a bit of an underwhelming Pokemon for most of Sinnoh, but he definitely came through in the Sinnoh League. Especially in his best feat when he took down Paul's Drapion which was able to sweep through half of Ash's team, and I'd actually argue that this Drapion is like a top 20 strongest non-legendary Pokemon in the whole anime series. And finally, we have Ash's second best fire type ever, Infernape. And I think we all know Infernape's best feat, that being when it took down Paul's Agron, Ninjask, then survived this, activated Blaze, and ultimately got his revenge. So to review in Sinnoh, it goes Torterra, to Star Raptor, to Gibble, to Buizel, to Gliscor, to Infernape. Next is Unova. And first up is Oshuots, who is easily one of Ash's worst starters ever. I guess Oshuots' best feat came in the Victini movie when it one-shot an opponent's Embor. But I don't know if this should fully count, as it was the result of Victini's victory powers. Now we've got Scraggy. It's another very unimpressive Pokemon, and honestly, it was just straight up weak. But Scraggy's best feat came in the gym battle against Bryson and his Vanillish. Scraggy was able to defeat Vanillish with a strong headbutt attack. Next is Snivy. Snivy's best feat came early on in the Unova series when it was able to defeat Trip Servine in battle. And up next, we have Palpitoad. Palpitoad at least had one somewhat impressive moment, and that of course being when it took down Elisa's pretty powerful Zebstroika. Now for Levani, and while Levani is certainly a pretty beloved Pokemon, it didn't do all that much when it came to battling. And this is thanks in large part to Ash just having too many Pokemon on his team in Unova. But Levani's best moment was when she defeated Roxy's Coughing. Then as for Bulldore, its best moment came as a Rog and Rolla in the battle with Gym Leader Clay. It's there that it evolved, and it took down Clay's Excadrill to earn Ash the Quake Badge. Now for Unpheasant. She only ever really had one feat. It came during Ash's gym battle with Skyla, while it was still just a little tranquil. Tranquil defeated Skyla's Swoobat, then squared off with Swanna, where it then evolved and claimed victory for Ash. Now we've got Pig Knight who is definitely Ash's second best Unovan Pokemon. One of Pig Knight's best feats came when it took down Cameron's powerful Hydreigon in the Unova League. But a feat just as impressive came in Ash's battle against Seamus. After evolving from a Tepig, Pig Knight used Fire Pledge and Flame Charge to take down both Embor and Heatmore. And then finally, we have Ash's Crocodile, who is far and away his best Pokemon on his Unovan team. And unsurprisingly, Crocodile has two separate awesome feats. The first being when as a Crocorock, he squared off with Iris' Dragonite, where it then tanked an Ice Beam, evolved, and then destroyed Iris' powerhouse of a Dragonite. But arguably more impressive was its showing in the Unova League against Stefan. It was there that he took down Stefan's Lipard, then later on he also took down Stefan's Sock. Well, that's it for Unova, and the scaling for this team goes Oshuat, Scraggy, Snivy, Palpitoad, Levani, Boldor, Unpheasant, Pig Knight, and finally, Crocodile. And now it's finally time for Kalos. Well, 
As we begin with one of Ash's most powerful teams ever, it should come as no surprise that Noivern is the most underwhelming Pokemon on the team. However, his best feat definitely came right after Evolution, when he was able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the legendary Zapdos. And while it didn't win, it certainly put up an amazing fight, and Noivern really pushed the legendary bird. Now for the other dragon type of the team, Gudra. Gudra didn't actually take part in that many battles, but I can confidently say its best feat was taking down Clement's powerful Luxray to earn Ash the Voltage Badge. Next up, we've got Ash's second best ever regional bird, Talonflame. Talonflame was incredible for Ash, but I'd say his best feat was when he quite literally got baptized in fire and tanked a Moltres flamethrower while evolving. It then went toe-to-toe -to -toe with Moltres in an epic fire-flying matchup. But it is also worth noting that Talonflame was able to defeat Wolfric's Avalug, the same Avalug that was able to defeat both Talonflame and Ash Greninja a few episodes earlier. Now for Hawlucha. Hawlucha performed very well for Ash in the Kalos League. I mean, he was able to take down Alon's speedy Weavile, but I wouldn't say this was Hawlucha's best feat. Instead, I think it came in the quarterfinal round when it defeated Astrid's Mega Absol. This was one of the few times ever in the anime when we saw a base form Pokemon defeat a Mega Evolved Pokemon. And finally is Greninja. Greninja obviously had loads of incredible and noteworthy feats. Of course, Greninja was able to defeat Sawyer's Mega Sceptile, who obviously had a massive typing advantage over it. But also, Greninja likely would have defeated Champion Diantha's Mega Gardevoir, had the Bond Phenomenon with him and Ash not broken. But I actually think that the mastery of the Bond Phenomenon might be the greatest feat of them all. It's a form that requires total synchronization and trust of both Trainer and Pokemon, and the form itself is incredibly rare. And to recap Ash's Kalos Pokemon feats ladder, it goes Noivern, Gudra, Talonflame, Hawlucha, and then Greninja. Now for Ash's champion Alola team. Ash's Alola team is filled with some incredible Pokemon, and we'll start here with his first and only mythical, Melmetal. Melmetal's best feat came in the exhibition battle with Professor Mass Royale Kakui, where he was able to totally overpower and defeat his Empoleon. It's kind of crazy to think that this was Melmetal's only win as a fully evolved mythical. Next up is Naganadel. Naganadel's best feat also came in that title defense match with Kakui, when even though it was at a typing disadvantage, it was able to defeat Kakui's Lucario. It then even took it a step further by going on to give Tapu Koko a real run for its money in a visually stunning battle. Now, we have the god himself, Rowlet. Beyond just existing, Ash's Rowlet had some insane displays of power while here in Alola. One such being when it outmaneuvered then defeated Kakui's Braviary, who is confirmed to be Kakui's second strongest Pokemon. But just as impressive is when Rowlet took down its fully evolved form in How's Decidui during the quarterfinals of the Alola League. And I think we all know that Ash's Incineroar's best feat was when as a Tauracat, it took down Kakui's Incineroar and then evolved. At the time, Kakui's Incineroar was undoubtedly the strongest non-legendary, non-mythical in the entire Alola region. So to see Ash's defeat his, while it was still just a Tauracat, is pretty insane. Especially when we also consider that Tauracat beat Kakui's Venusaur earlier in the battle. But of course, the Pokemon with the best feat is Ash's Lycanroc. First off, I have to mention that Lycanroc was able to 3v1 Kahuna Nanu's entire team by beating his Crocodile, Sableye, and Alolan Persian. But obviously, Lycanroc's best feat is winning Ash the Alola League by defeating Gladion's Lycanroc with the iconic counter against counter tactic. This was such an epic feat, and Lycanroc is still Ash's only Pokemon to ever win him a regional league. So that means Lycanroc did something that neither Ash's Charizard or Greninja could do. So now, to recap the regional champion team, it goes Melmetal, Naganadel, Rowlet, Incineroar, and then Lycanroc. Well, now it's time for Ash's final team. Ash Ketchum's world champion team was obviously quite impressive, and they clashed with some very powerful opponents. And let's begin with Mr. Mime. Oh, I bet you didn't think we'd be counting him, but he did actually partake in a battle. 
Mimey did only appear in one battle throughout Pokemon Journeys, and that was against Hodges Hariyama in the Flute Cup. Mr. Mime performed flawlessly in this battle. By totally outclassing Hariyama, he easily took Hariyama down before conceding to Mightyena. Alright, now for Ash's real Journeys team. Ash's Gengar performed very well throughout the series, and his best feat came in the finale of the Masters 8 tournament, when he was able to Gigantamax and then took down Leon's Inteleon. Next, we have Dracovish. Dracovish had some insane raw power, and it was displayed many times throughout Journeys, but his best feat is when he took down Leon's insanely OP Rillaboom. I mean, this Rillaboom is arguably a top 3 Pokemon ever in terms of raw strength. Then we have Dragonite. She was an absolute powerhouse throughout the entire Journey series. She took down Karina's Mianxiao and Mega Lucario, and she even defeated Leon's powerful Dragapult. But Dragonite's best feat is probably when she defeated Iris's Haxorus. Yeah, taking down a champion's ace is pretty crazy, especially when you're able to do it without a battling gimmick. Now for Surfetched. His feat is a little different than the others. His best moments came in the Cynthia battle in the semifinals of the Masters 8. Beyond just defeating Cynthia's second strongest Pokemon in Milotic, Surfetched really helped set the table for Ash to win this battle by clearing the field of Stealth Rocks and pushing Cynthia's Garchomp to its absolute limit. Surfetched was definitely the most underrated Mon on this journey's team. And finally, now we have Lucario. Lucario was Ash's main ace in Pokemon Journeys. Throughout the series, it did tons of impressive things, like soloing opponents' teams, mastering Mega Evolution, and squaring off with legendaries, including Mewtwo. But I have to say, Lucario's most impressive moment came in the semifinals against Cynthia. It's there he was able to go Mega and square off with Dynamax Togekiss. This battle literally broke the laws of physics, but then Lucario was able to defeat Togekiss, and then, after a major slugfest with Garchomp, it claimed the win, making Ash the victor. And finally, to recap on Ash's Pokemon Journeys team, it goes Gengar, Dracovish, Dragonite, Surfetched, and Lucario. Well guys, that's that. These are the best feats of every single Pokemon owned by Ash Ketchum. If you enjoyed, please drop a like on the video. Oh, and also, check out these videos on screen for more. Thanks guys, and have a good one.